Right. Now, we would like to go through a few examples. I think there are three or four examples. Right. I will, if you see in your uh, um, notes that I have given uh, just before the class, so the examples are not included, right? Um, because I'm still wondering whether is it uh, okay to go through directly from, from the textbook. But meanwhile, for example, 3.2, 3.3 and 3.4, I will share you, with you the updated uh, notes uh, later on, right after the uh, this particular session. Okay, consider a supersonic flow with Mach number 2, eh, M2, and uh, also given the pressure at 1 atm, temperature at 288 Kelvin. So the flow is deflected at a compression corner through 20 degree. Okay? You have to uh, calculate the Mach number, the pressure, the temperature, the P0, and T not behind the resulting oblique shock wave. So basically, so if you can see here from this figure, M for M1 equal to 2. So if you refer to figure 9.9 .9 from the textbook, so you feel you follow through um, the line, the curve when Mach number equal to 2, right? So you will then get the theta to be 20 degrees, right? So, and beta 53.4. So basically, so this is, again, this is beta, this is uh, theta, and this is the curve of Mach number. So let us, uh, let me just go to the textbook so that we can zoom in, right? So we can uh, zoom into the, the, the textbook okay so if you uh, read the theta value of 20 degree right so you go uh, straight up at 20 degree when it reaches at uh, 20, uh, 20 uh, mark number equal to 2 so you can then read the corresponding value of beta right? beta which is here so so um, uh, bear with me, we can we have to go back and, and forth. So basically the beta, the value that is uh, being read over here is 53.4 degrees. All right? So you take from uh, uh, theta equal to 20 and read when it intersect at mark number 2, then it is approximate. Eh? So because uh, you cannot get the actual value um, like what be, being, being uh, shown here, 53.4. If you re just read 54 or 56 or 52, yeah, sometimes if you, 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 you will get uh, slightly different values. So hence, um, you will then get MN1 uh, equal to, uh, using this uh, uh, expression to get the value of MN1. One, eh, which you know already, m1 equal to two. The sine value for beta 53.4 degree, which then resulted to the uh, m n1 to become 1.606. Okay, so now you look at appendix B. Eh, appendix B eh, for m n1 uh, equal to 1.6, eh, and you use the approach of rounded to the nearest table so basically from appendix b you get uh, mn1 equal to 1.6 so you can get the corresponding value for mn2 you get the corresponding value for pressure ratio the temperature ratio and p02 or p or over p01 value so hence you can now obtain the value of m2 right which is resulted to be 1.21 and then get the value of p2 because you know p2 over p1 the pressure ratio is 2.82 right so you just times the pressure because given the value earlier p1 equal to 1 atm right so so you can get uh, p2 to become 2.82 atm and temperature you know already the temperature is at 200 and 
88 Kelvin T1. So you get the corresponding T2 value to become 399.7 uh, Kelvin, right? So for M1, so um, M subscript 1, eh, M1 equal to 2 from appendix A now, right? So you then get the value of P01 over P1, right? So you read from appendix A and then you read also from appendix A the T01 over T1, which is equal to 1.8. So now you can get the value of P02, right, to become 7 ATM. So the total temperature is constant across the shock. Then we get uh, the value of T02, right? So because we if it is constant across the shock, uh, T02 equal to T01, and T02 then resulted to become 500 and 18.4 kelvin all right so i hope you can you can try by yourself in terms of follow through the example uh given eh? um, if it is in the textbook it is example uh, 9.2 right so try to get uh, refer to appendix b of course earlier you you uh, refer to figure 9.9 .9, and then refer to appendix B, make sure that you can get the corresponding value when MN1 equal to 1.6, right? And then uh, to get the value of uh, uh, P02 and T02, you are using M1 at appendix A, okay? At appendix A, so you can get the corresponding value, okay? Note that, eh, for example, two, three, uh, three point two here eh, for oblique shocks. So the entry for P, the ratio of P zero two over P one in appendix B cannot be used. Eh? This, this you have to take take note over here eh, to obtain P zero two, and this entry in appendix B is for normal shock only, and is obtained directly from equation uh, uh, in the textbook is equation eight point eight point eight. So in turn, the equation uh, 8.8 8 .8 from Anderson, Anderson textbook is derived using equation 8.77, right? So where the M2 is the actual flow mark number. And it is, this is not the normal uh, component. So only in the case of a normal shock is this also the Mach number normal to the wave. Hence, equation 880 in Anderson textbook holds only for normal shock. So it cannot be used for oblique shock with M1 replaced by MN1. For example, an incorrect calculation would be to use P02 over P1 ratio equal to 3.805 for MN1 U get 1.6 this give p02 equal to 3.805 atm so a, a totally incorrect result eh, compared the to the correct value of 7 atm that we have obtained here all right so if you use uh, p01 value from appendix b you will get a different value of P02, eh? so which is 3.8, which is less than the actual correct results. So that is example 3.2, eh, which is actually um, example 9.2 in the in the textbook. Now let us move into another example, example 3.3. Okay. So you want to consider an oblique shock wave with a wave angle. So wave angle being given as 30 degree. Okay, what is wave angle? Basically, it is the, the beta value, right? So if you can see here, we are now, now using the other portion of the figure 9.9, .9, right? So earlier, it is uh, the figure 9.1, .9, the first part. Right, and now we are looking at the figure 9.9, .9, the second part, right? And the upstream flow mark number is given as 2.4. And you have to calculate the 
deflection angle of the flow, okay? the pressure and the temperature ratio across the shock wave and the Mach number behind the wave. So from figure 9.9, .9, okay, so you have at Mach number 2.4 over there and beta equal to 30 degrees. So if you read beta 30 degree and Mach number, sorry, uh, beta 30 degree is on the other side. Eh? So uh, this is beta 30 degree, uh, Mach number 2.4. So you, we have theta equal to 6.5 uh, degree, okay? So, right, also have um, MN1 equal to M1 sine beta, which is equal to 2.4 sine 30 degrees, which is resulted to M11, MN1 to become 1.2. And uh, from appendix B, so you will get the pressure ratio P21 over P1 equal to 1.513 and the temperature ratio is equal to 1.128 and you get MN2 which is equal to 0.8422, right? So thus you will then obtain the Mach number behind the, uh, the short wave, right? To become 2.11. Right. So note that. Eh? So what is a uh, what we need to take into consideration? And two aspects are illustrated by this example. Eh? So this is fairly weak shock wave. Only a fifty one percent increase in pressure eh, across the wave. So indeed, by examining uh, figure nine point nine, the chart just now, we find that this case is close to that of a mark, mark wave where uh, mu okay the mark wave equal to uh, this expression the side uh, the side of minus one one over mark number okay you put down the mark number uh, 2.4 over there you get the value of the uh, mark uh, wave eh? mark wave angle 24.6 degrees so the shock wave angle of 30 degrees is not much larger than the Mach wave. Yeah, the deflection angle of 6.5 degrees is so small. It's small, consi consist, uh, is, is also small and yeah, consistent with the relative weakness of the shock wave. So point number two over here, only two properties need to be specified in order to define uniquely a given oblique shock wave. In this example, so M uh, at position one and beta were those two properties. So in example 3.2, the earlier example, so the specified M1 and theta were the two properties. So it is a slightly two condition. One is we, we give you uh, uh, the value of theta, right? And in the second example, example 3.3, .3, we give you um the value of beta right beta m m1 so once any two properties about the oblique shock are specified the shock is uniquely defined so you can get the corresponding value either beta or theta and so this is analogous to the, the case of a normal shock wave that we studied earlier in chapter two yeah? there we prove that all the changes across normal shock wave were uniquely defined by specifying only one property because we only need uh, M1 to get the value of uh, changes across the short wave, normal short wave. Eh? However, so implicit in all of chapter two was an additional property, namely the wave angle. So uh, for this time, the wave angle of a normal shock is 90 degree. And of course, a normal shock is simply one example of the whole spectrum of oblique shock, eh? namely a shock with beta equal to 90 degree. And examination of uh, figure 9.9 .9 shows that the normal shock belongs to the family of strong shock solutions as discussed earlier. All right. So let us uh, look into uh, another example, uh, which is 3.4. Before we go to the example 3.5, 
or 9.5 in the textbook. Okay. Um, consider an oblique short wave eh, with beta equal 35 de degrees and a pressure ratio of 3. Eh, P2 over P1 given 3. Okay. Uh, beta equal to 3, 35. You want to find what is the upstream mark number. Eh, straight away, uh, to find the upstream mark number, you look at appendix B. Okay. So then uh, you go for the pressure ratio equal to 3 as given, right? And then you read the corresponding uh, MN1. What is the value of MN1, which is the nearest entry, which is uh, using the nearest entry approach, eh, one which is equal to 1.64. And we know already from our earlier uh, derivation, Okay, MN1 equal to M1 sine beta. So, you know beta equal to 35 degree. Then you get the corresponding mark number upstream, M1, eh, 2.86. So, once again, the oblique shock is uniquely defined by two properties. In this case, it is given by beta and the pressure ratio, P2 over P1. Okay, there are many variations. So, you need to know um, what are the properties given and then we will then use either the figure 9.9 eh, .9, or using the approach uh, to look into the corresponding values at appendix b right okay for the next one example 3.3.5 i would like to go into uh, the textbook let me just move into the textbook. Okay, 9.5. Okay. Uh, consider, okay, now you have to consider a Mark 3 flow. And you have to, you, you consider a Mark 3 flow. So it is desired to slow this flow to a subsonic speed. Okay, you consider two separate ways of achieving this. And the first one is that the Mark 3 flow is slowed by passing directly through a normal shock wave, right? So imagine in case number one here, you have the flow mark at Mark 3, it passes through a normal shock wave. So basically, P01 will become P02. The second, second condition is that, the second case, the Mark 3 flow first passes through an oblique shock wave, so it passes through oblique short wave at an angle of 40 degree wave angle. So this is 43, 40 degree wave angle. And then subsequently through a normal shock. So there are two uh, uh, flow changes. Eh? One is through the oblique shock and the other one is through the normal shock. So these two cases are sketched in this particular figure below and eh? this uh, case one and then case number two. You need to calculate the ratio of final total pressure values for the two cases. And that is the total pressure behind the normal shock for case two divided by total pressure behind the normal shock case for case one. So you have first you have to find the uh, total pressure for uh, case one and then uh, total final total pressure for case two and the, then take the value for case two divide to case one and you have to make a comment eh? so let us look into the uh, solution right so for case one let me just enlarge it a little bit right at mark number three you go for appendix b if you go to appendix b okay you will then read the value of pressure ratio p02 over p01 which is equal to 0 0.3283 all right for case two we have mn1 okay, which is equal to m1 sine beta so we know beta is 40 degree and beta is given as 40 degree. So uh, we from appendix B, right, we get the value of MN1, okay, and we know um, the 
uh, sorry we 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 calculate eh, for m and 1 we know the value of m1 which is 3 you uh, times the sine 40 degree you get 1.93 so from appendix b you read the corresponding p02 over p01 which is equal to 0 0.7535 so at mn1 equal to 1.93 then you get mn2 equal to 0 0.588 right so from the figure 9.9 .9, the theta beta mach number chart right for m1 equal to 3 and beta equal to 40 we have a deflection angle of 22 degree right given beta equal to 40 okay using the chart at mark 3 you get theta equal to 22 so hence using the expression for m2 putting the values you get m2 equal to 1.9 so from appendix b the normal shock with upstream mark number of 1.9 we get a pressure ratio of 0 0.7674. That's where we can now get the value of P03 for case number two, right? Which is equal to 0 0.578 and divide the value of case two over case one, then you get it to become 1.7C. Okay, so the result eh, for of example 9.5 here and eh, shows that the final total pressure is 76 percent which is higher for the case for the multi multiple shock system so you have of course first you want it goes through an oblique shock and then it's being uh, deflected when it goes to another uh, normal shock right eh? so in comparison to only a single normal shock case so in principle the total pressure is an indicator of how much useful work can be done by the gas. And this is described later in our uh, later uh, discussion where everything else being equal, the higher the total pressure, the more useful the flow, right? So indeed, losses of total pressure are an index of efficiency of a fluid flow. And right? the lower the total pressure loss the more efficient is the flow process so in this example case 2 is more efficient in slowing the flow to subsonic fluid subsonic uh, speed okay that's why a certain uh, design of uh, high speed uh, engine right they are having uh, a different different entry inlet and different angle so it is a complex uh, angle where sorry complex uh, engine uh, uh, inlet design so that it can slow down the incoming uh, speed uh, velocity of the air okay so basically the physical reason uh, for this is straightforward and the loss in total pressure across a normal shock wave become particularly severe as the upstream Mach number increases, right, at, as, at, at a glance of P02 or P01 column in appendix B, right, so if the Mach number of the flow can be reduced before passing through a normal shock, the loss in total pressure is much less because the normal shock is weaker. Eh? So this is the function of the oblique shock in case two, namely to reduce the Mach, the Mach number before passing through the normal shock. So although there is a total pressure loss across the oblique shock and it is much less than across a normal shock at the same upstream Mach number. And we can say here, the net effect of the oblique shock reduce the Mach number flow before passing through the normal shock wave that then makes up the total pressure loss across the oblique shock and with the beneficial result that the multiple shock system produces a smaller loss in total pressure than a single normal shock at the free stream mark number. All right.